Hello and welcome to my course, Learn to Design on a Mobile Device with Onshape. My name is Christian Stark and in this module I introduce basic CAD concepts. This CAD course is designed for absolute beginners who want to learn computer-aided design or what is also simply called CAD. I'm using Onshape to introduce CAD because it is available on mobile iOS and Android devices, but also runs in the browser without having to install anything. And for small projects, it is free to use, which makes it now available to a lot more people. Now, if you are an experienced CAD user, you can fast forward and skip some of the more basic introductions and just go straight to the sections that demonstrate the actual use of Onshape. In this course, we will design the basic components and connectors you can use to mount your GoPro camera. All of the parts created are 3D printable on your desktop printer, or you can use your favorite online 3D printing service such as Shapeways. With these basic components, you can then build additional variations extending your own GoPro toolkit. So I will start with some very basic CAD concepts. Then I will show you Onshape's touch interface on an iPad, after which we will get started with some sketching basics, followed by an introduction of 3D modeling tools. Then I will step back to show you more sketch tools and introduce sketch constraints, which are important to understand because they often cause frustration with beginners especially. But let's get started with some of the very basic components of any modern CAD software. Each CAD software system has a modeling space similar to the blank page in a Word document. This is where you draw and create 3D parts. The modeling space has a center point, also often called the origin. Attached to the center point is the primary coordinate system with its three axes, X, Y, and C, which we all remember from high school math a long time ago. I know, it was a long time. In any case, attached to the primary coordinate systems are the default three primary planes called top, right, and front plane. Before you can create a sketch, you have to select a plane that will now hold all the geometry. However, you're not limited to the three default planes and every CAD system lets you define additional planes inside the modeling space, which might be parallel to the default ones or can, can be placed in any orientation. Again, these additional planes are also used for sketches enabling you to further shape your parts. At this point, I want to briefly introduce the view cube which is a user interface element in Onshape, which lets you manipulate how you look at your part, and it is a permanent reference on how your view is oriented. You'll notice that it also displays the coordinate system and the default planes. We'll get back to the view cubes in a few more minutes. In the past, before we had powerful computers, engineers, architects, and product designers use drawing boards to create 2D technical drawings. When I was in engineering school some 30 years ago, I too learned how to create 2D drawings on a drawing board. However, over the last 30 years, drawing boards pretty much have disappeared and have been slowly replaced with CAD software, which too has changed dramatically over time. Back then, you used various tools, such as an architect scale, which had multiple scales for different unit types. You also used the triangle, and for more curved lines, you used the French curves. The problem with this old way of creating technical manufacturing drawings was that it was extremely time-consuming, and it took days to create a full set of construction drawings for a simple product, where today, you can do this in hours. So let me walk you first through the various steps it takes within a modern CAD system such as Onshape to create your first basic part. The first thing you do is to select a plane and create a sketch. In our example, we have sketched the basic profile for our GoPro mount extension 
including some basic dimensions. The next step uses an extrude new operation which drags the sketch through the modeling space, depositing material and creating your 3D part. To further shape the part, we select one of the side faces of the part for a second sketch that has three rectangles on top and two at the bottom. We use this sketch to remove material from our part using the extrude remove operation. You now have the prongs or tabs on your part, including the holes for the screws, which essentially act as a connectors between various GoPro mounting pieces. The next step uses the same, the same plane as the previous one and is a simple rectangle with round corners. We will use this sketch with an extrude remove operation to further remove material from the part to actually create a pocket. We now have a basic functional part, but to make it look and feel better, we want to remove the sharp edges by rounding them using the fillet operation, which will allow you to specify the rounding radius for the selected edges. In one of the next clips, I will show you how to actually do all of this on a mobile device. At this point, I want to introduce one more important CAD concept. We created the part in sequential steps, also called features. Though just like in your word processor, where you can go back and place your cursor anywhere in the text to change, remove or insert text, you can do the same thing in Onshape or any other history of feature-based CAD modeler. So for example, you can go back to the second sketch, make some modifications, and these changes are then propagated forward, changing the part. This is very powerful since it enables you to roughly create and shape a part, but then go back and add further detail at a later point in time. The last concept I want to introduce in this section are views and visualizations. The part we've created can now be rotated so you can look at all sides and angles. Traditionally, when you create a 2D drawing of a part, you create various views that show the part from the front right and top. In Onshape, you can quickly orient the view to these default planes by clicking on the according planes in the view queue. Here you see the part from the front and the right and the top. One thing you'll notice is that with these three views, you still can't see the pocket we created. That is where section views come into play, enabling you to Pick a plane or face on the part, which you will use to temporarily slice a part in half, hiding the half closer to the screen. With this section view, you can now actually see the, par the part of the pocket in the back. Section views are very useful, especially when you want to look inside a part or when your part gets more complex. Again, in the next clips, I will show you how to do all of this in the software but I feel it is very important you first get a good conceptual overview of the entire part creation and visualization process before we jump into the software and its user interface. Lastly, let me briefly talk about different visualizations for your part. Most of the time you will visualize parts in what is called shaded mode. Next to the view cube is a little icon that opens the view menu that shows various view types, lets you define named views, and most importantly, lets you pick how your part is rendered. You can show it as shaded without edges, which is more of a photorealistic view, but not that useful for part creation. The next one is shaded with hidden edges. That will enable you to select such hidden edges. Then the next two are with and without hidden edges, but not shaded, meaning having no color. This is how 2D drawing represent, represents parts. And lastly, there is a translucent mode, which is basically a full wireframe of your part. Again, only useful when you have a very simple part or when you are way zoomed into the details. The last item on the view menu is a section view that we've already covered. 
I just wanted to summarize most of the visualizations here before we even get to play with the software. So again, what you see on the left of views and what you see on the right of visualizations. This should now give you a good overview of some basic CAD terminology, the basic concepts of sketching and 3D modeling, and how parts can be viewed and visualized. In the next sections, I will actually start using Onshape on an iPad and show you each of the steps outlined here. See you there.